Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet, Isaiah. He sends many other prophets, but this one in particular, to communicate a divine promise. What is the promise? That Allah was going to send a prophet to Banu Israel. Who would be their prophet? And who would be known as Al-Masih, the Messiah. And who when he comes, will rule the world. From the throne of Dawood alayhi salam. With a rule which will be eternal. The throne of Dawood alayhi salam is the state of Israel. It is Jerusalem. And so when the Messiah comes, he will rule the world from Jerusalem. The Jews realized that if the Messiah is to rule the world from Jerusalem when he comes, and Jerusalem is under Babylonian occupation, then there are certain very simple logical deductions. Number one, the Messiah will have to liberate the Holy Land, which is now under Babylonian occupation. Number two, the Messiah will have to bring Banu Israel back to the Holy Land, not as tourists, but to reclaim it. Number three, the Messiah will have to restore the state of Israel in the Holy Land. And number four, that state of Israel of Israel will have to become once again the ruling state in the world. And then the Messiah can rule the world from Jerusalem. In other words, when the Messiah come, he will have to bring back the golden age. When the Jews rule the world. Shall I repeat that? When the Messiah comes, he will have to bring back the golden age when the Jews rule the world. And so in the heart of every Jew, there is this absolute conviction that one day we will rule the world once again. And when we do that, we will rule forever. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Messiah, some of them accepted him. The young ones, the poor, the humble, the innocent. But the rabbis, the administration, the establishment, they rejected him. Why did they reject him? They say he's a bastard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had tested them and because they were seeing with only one eye, they failed the test. And then when he lambasted them for their riba, he went into the <laughs> temple, the masjid, and he found them engaged in riba. He cursed them and he turned over their tables and he chased them out of the masjid. And he declared that you've taken the house of Allah and transformed it into a den of thieves and then decided he must die. And then they forced the hand of the Roman government to execute him. But how? By hanging. Crucifixion. Why did they want him to die like that? Because it's still there in the Torah. It is still there up to now. They've not taken it out. They're not going to take it out. Whoever dies by hanging is the cursed of Allah. So if we can get him to die like that, it will now become absolutely plain and clear beyond the shadow of a doubt. He could not have been the Messiah. And then when they saw him die, they were so overjoyed they could dance with joy. him, Allah says, they're boasting now. Inna qatalna al-Masiha Isa ibn Maryam Rasul Allah. This is called sarcasm. We've killed him. The Messiah, meaning sarcasm. The son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. They didn't believe all of that. They thought he was an imposter. 
When they saw him die on the cross before their very eyes, it was now absolutely plain and clear beyond a shadow of a doubt he could not have been the Messiah. Why? He has the curse of the Lord upon him. Why? He's dead, but he never ruled the world from Jerusalem with a rule which is eternal. Huh? What they didn't know and what no one knew, absolutely no one knew, not even the Pope. <laughs> Until Allah revealed the Quran, no one knew it. Was no, they did not kill him. That was their first objective, to kill him. So Allah says, you did not achieve objective number one. Objective number two was to cause him to die on the cross, not on the ordinary death. So Allah says, no, you did not achieve objective number two as well, because he was not crucified. Hmm? Well, Allah made it appear unto you that that was what happened. Hmm? But Allah raised him unto himself. One day he's coming back. And guess what he's going to do when he comes back? He's going to rule the world. He's going to rule the world from Jerusalem with a rule which will be eternal and so that will be the end of history when he comes back and rules the world with eternal rule from Jerusalem it is Islam which will be established in the Holy Land and so Islam will rule the world and no government including the government of Australia can stop that after they had boasted of how they crucified him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded and listened to the ayah. Listen to it. Because in this ayah is located the historical process. Wa immin ahlil kitab illa la yu'minan bihi qabla mauti wa yawm al qiyamati yakunu alayhim shaheed. Oh, it's like music in the ears of the Palestinians now. Allah is warning. He says, not a single one of you will escape. Every single Jew. On that day when the son of Mary comes back. And before he experiences mouth like everyone else. in Kulu nafsin za'ikatul mouth. Every soul must taste death including the son of Mary. So before that event takes place, when he returns. Every single Jew will now have to accept him as the Messiah. And every Christian on that day, including the Pope, will have to accept that he is Nabi. Nabi Isa alayhi salam. Exactly as Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said. And that he ain't no son of God. And there ain't no trinity. And so that is the end of Christianity. The cross is broken. And the swine are killed. And only one true religion now remains. But when they accept him now as Nabi and as Al-Masih, it will be of no benefit to them. Because this is the last moment now when this, the, the eyes are unveiled and you can now see when death is staring you in your face. Because at that moment when the son of Mary comes back, and they can now see, now it's too late. Because now the Muslim army will come and liberate the Holy Land. And no one can stop that army. He said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, He said, when you see the black flags coming from the direction of Khorasan, go and join that army, even if you have to crawl over ice. Because no one will be able to stop that army. Until it reaches Jerusalem. Hmm? They now die. The worst possible death. Knowing that all that they had held on to as truth was falsehood. 
and all that they had opposed and demonized and rejected as falsehood was the truth. So they die the most horrible of all deaths. And when they are raised for judgment, he gives evidence against them and they go into the hellfire. Who died like that? Who died like that? When he was drowning underneath the water. When he was drowning. And death was staring him in his eyes. Then the veils were removed the eyes. And he said, now I believe in the God of Banu Israel. To which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded, Al-an, now Fir'aun? Al-an, now Fir'aun? Wa qad asayta qabl? And before this you were in such obstinate rejection? Wa kunta min al-ghafilin? Falyawma nunajjika bi badanik. This day we have determined to preserve your physical body. لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً So that your body, when it is recovered in history, will function as a sign of all signs, as big as a billboard, for a people who will suffer the same fate that you suffered. That the countdown has now begun for them. لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا لَغَافِلُونَ How pathetic is this language? How sad is this language? He says most people, they don't have time for my ayat. They're too busy. You gotta go to work and come back home and earn money to buy the BMW. So they don't have time for my ayat. How pathetic is this language? How sad is this language? وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا لَغَافِلُونَ They are oblivious of the ayat of Allah which unfold in the historical process and are as big as billboards facing them. When was the body of Pharaoh recovered? At the end of the 19th century. And that was when the countdown began. That you are now going to face the same fate that he suffered. You will die the way he died.